one thing that I, I, I took away from it almost instantly was this um, Lone Star approach that you guys had for breakdancing. Because like you're saying, you, you, you're flying, flying flowers out there for, for these people, but, but you were... You, at that one stage, you guys were the only ones breakdancing. Yeah, as a crew yeah, in the UK. I mean, I, I can't vouch for every lone b-boy that was out there doing it, you know, but obviously pushing it day to day and trying to raise the art form. Yeah. In the UK, that was us. The Killer Killer Podcast. The Killer Killer Official dot com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com Box created. Killer Killer. And we here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. You want positive things to be said about Circuit and None, you come to the right place, <laughs> man. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be. God damn it, you don't want to be anywhere else. Um, big shout out to all the regulars, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk, hold tight, strangestation.co.uk and uh, the mighty nolpolandrecords.com um, for your hip-hop classics right there. Um, and everybody's got a television app, you know what time it is, uh, free download iPhone, Android, street culture, if you're street culture sports, it's a television app. Uh, we are inside the house with a hero of mine, we've ordered a chat and it's going to get deep. You have to understand the gravity of this man from this particular breakdance crew of a time where there was literally nobody breakdancing. These guys held the flag and took it to the mountain across Europe. Mercenaries is a documentary. If you haven't checked them out by now, you really should. It is the A to Z of what arguably is a defining breakdance crew of the UK. Tony the Pencil, second to none crew inside the house. Thank you, thank you. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm okay, mate. I'm good. Yeah, yeah it's good. good to have you here. Thanks. It's good. It's good for you to invite me here. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> uncanny. Like we've got so many re- connected friends within. Like, the moment we started chatting, I was like, "Yo, actually, yeah, Dexter, big up Dexter, Cell One, hold tight, Cell One, uh, Prime Cuts, Prime Cuts. Yeah, we're all kind. Of, we're kind of. Uh, we haven't really met much over the years, but we kind of know people that know people that know people. Mm-hmm. So we're all kind of yeah. It's all yeah. interconnected. It is interconnected. It? Yeah, yeah. Um, Bournemouth. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, that's the uh, residing place of the mighty aforementioned. Um, arguably, in twenty twenty two onwards, uh, the last place you would think of the inception of Second to None to to dominated from. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, it's it, and this is coming from a, a, a bumpkin myself. I got a carrot cruncher himself <laughs> from the, the mighty West Sussex region. <laughs> I swear to God, man, when I heard you guys were from this place, I was just like, it was so curious to me. I was like, God, these guys are like world standard and they're, they're not from London. This is fucking crazy. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, um, it, it sort of happened by accident, really. You know, we were part of like, obviously we were, Joined in with the like, let's say the b boy breakdancing craze in the mid nineteen eighties. We were obviously part of that, and every town we used to go to, you know, whether it be um, sort of um, you know, so, you know, Southampton, Portsmouth on the south coast, Brighton, they all had crews, mm-hmm. and you know, Bournemouth had a couple of crews, and you know, and like we used to go to Southampton, they used to go here, and then Portsmouth used to come to Bournemouth, and it's strange because you know. Um, a couple of guys from, you know, Portsmouth ended up being in Second to None because we were kind of, you know, mm-hmm. we used to bump into each other because we used to go to London as well. We went to Spats back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we got around a lot, you know. I saw, I you know, we tasted a lot of different flavours and cultures in breaking, you know. I saw Street Machine back, break back in the day. I saw all the top crews, mm-hmm. Rock City, mm-hmm. you know, London All-Stars, Live to Break. I saw everybody dance Huge back then. Huge crews. So, yeah, Huge. so, yeah. And so, yeah, we kind of got around, saw the B-Boys, you know, I saw them break. I remember seeing the B-Boys battle live to break, um, uh, um, what was it, 1986 in Spats at the May Day Jam. I was wow. there for that. So I was part of the crowd. So, um, but I wasn't, I mean, I, I wasn't really a, a, a breaker to start off anyhow. I was, I was a popper first. So it wasn't later on I actually got into breaking. Um, I didn't actually start breaking until kind of around about uh, late 85, really, um, early 86. 
just mucking about with bits and bobs, really, bits of footwork, bits of head spins, just bits and bobs, mm. you know. Mm. And obviously, the other guys, that was before Second to None. Um, second to None didn't really form until late 85. Because mm. um, so, there was a lot, there was, there was, there were three or four different crews. Yeah, there was, yeah, and, yeah. And you guys, yeah. it's almost like cherry picked, you found yourself. Well, yeah, yeah, because when everybody started to give up, obviously, if you were good at something, you weren't yeah. so likely to give up at it. Mm. So, obviously, Dowell was the best in Universal Rockers. Big up, Dowell. He's so, fucking a so, Yeah, he is, Ooh. yeah. He's, he's like, he was this really, like, quite short, strong, stocky guy yeah. who kind of had all this, where it's this power that kind of, like, um, yeah. couldn't, you can't explain it, really. He, he was... He was built like a little rhinoceros, yeah. and he had just so much power on the floor, and his dance looked so brutal. Mm, that, brutal is yeah, the yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just looked, it looked so like you know raw and brutal, and it sort of you know. And so basically, when around the time Universal Rocker split up and My Crew split up, there was a guy called Steve Kerr, um, who was originally from Shock City, who's, who's basically dead now. He died in a car accident. Um, oh, rest in peace. So basically, it was his mm. idea um, to get the, the the remaining bits and bobs of the crews in Bournemouth together at that time. So um, basically, um, I joined because they liked what I was doing. Obviously, they asked Daryl to join, um, and then you know, obviously, this was um, obviously this is the start of second time. Paul was obviously in mm. the Shock City crew, so he, you know, he asked me to join, and then it was Terry, um, and, and those were sort of like the essential guys in seconds and none. And then later on, it kind of changed and evolved into the later lineup, which is the definitive lineup, because um, Steve and, and Paul went to. Um, went to Portsmouth because Nick used to come down to Bournemouth and break with us and basically mm. asked asked him and Wayne to join. He was originally from a crew called the Masters, the Masters. which was which is a mixture of 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 breakers from Portsmouth and Southampton, which is which is hard to believe if you, if you know the, the beef between those on a football yeah, yeah, level. Of course, yeah. It's like you know it's like it's it's hard to believe. But yeah, I mean it was it was um a guy called Dean the Freitas, his crew and basically, um, Nick, for the time, was the best in the Masters. I mean, I can say that, you know, Dean wouldn't mind me saying that anyhow. So um, he was pretty amazing for the time, really. You know, he, you know, 1985, he could do, like, continuous flares, like 5-1990s, you know, and link them Mad. all together, you know, for that time. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people just doing one move. Yeah. Was not A lot of people were like, you that know, was kind of windmill, backspin, yeah. pop out. Whereas, you know, Nick, for the time, and Wayne as well, you know, they were doing, like... Flare windmill pop out, flare head spin, you know, really unusual moves like this. Yeah, yeah. That I hadn't seen in other places, and I'd seen other crews like you know Street Machine and Rock City. Mm. You know, who were, you know Street Machine were amazing as well, but obviously they did different stuff that was amazing. But some of the stuff that Nick was doing at mm. that time of Wayne, I hadn't really seen that before. So um, you know, and they and Nick was inspired by Power, like we were, mm. and um, obviously we later on. We were obviously majorly inspired by New York City Breakers at the time because mm -hmm. that's how we come into yeah. contact with Power. You know, obviously more inspired for us um, New York City Breakers than Rocksteady. We, mm -hmm. you know, big respect to Rocksteady, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the Power thing was um, obviously New York City Breakers. Yeah, and later for on sure. for us, you know, I didn't know about the story of Incredible Breakers and that till Quickstep yeah. told me. So those kind of things. <sighs> it's it, again just you have to. Get into the documentary that's out there at the moment, The Mercenaries. That's something that you put together. Right? Yeah, yeah. Me, um, Nathan and uh, Charlie Marbles put that together. It took us 10 years to make yeah. that film. Yeah, <laughs> but, but the, the, it's weighty. It's, it's got a lot. It, I, don't know if it, I, I don't know if it's a good comparison, but it, I, 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 I caught the same uh, feels as I did with the Dogtown Z-Boys documentary. Yeah, yeah. It, that, yeah, yeah. That, that sort of feeling, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah that's... To be honest, that's kind of the vibe that we wanted. You kind yeah. of nailed it there. Yeah, yeah, it that, really has yeah, that. that sort of almost fly on the wall kind of documentary of you know guys getting raw and just doing it for the love. And yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Doing it for the love is the, that that's putting it li lightly. I, I I think what we're talking about here in the history of break dancing and how it be boying and how it all came about for Second to None really is epitomised in that documentary. And one thing that I, I I took away from it almost instantly was this um, Lone Star approach that you guys had for breakdancing. Because, like you're saying, you, you, you're flying, flying flowers out there for, for these people, but, but you were... You, at the one stage, you guys were the only ones breakdancing. Yeah, as a crew yeah, in the UK. I mean, I, I can't vouch for every lone b-boy that was out there doing it, you know, but obviously pushing it day to day and trying to raise the art form. Yeah. In the UK, that was us doing that. It was trying to raise the art form in the late 1980s. You know, we, we travelled around, you know, the, in, the, in the UK, you know, and obviously 
you were, it was the new Jack era by the late 80s. So, yeah, so right. you know, people tend to forget how disc breaking was around that time. You know, some people totally. really disliked it. You're yeah. doing it. Oh, that's old school. That's whack. Yeah, they really hate yeah, you. You really, ha- yeah. really disgust us doing it. Yeah, you used to throw ice on the floor and why are you doing that shit? Yeah. And, you know, aren't you guys have played out? But we it kind of bounced off us, really. We were kind of like... We're just going to carry on. We don't care. You know, we, we obviously, I, I still like the music from then. I, I you know, I liked that mm. New Jack era, you know, maybe the dancing because I didn't really see that as a, a progression from breaking. I no, no. thought it was a regression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, how can you sure. be doing all this high level stuff and suddenly regress into this other dance that's, yeah, yeah. that's simpler than breaking? Yeah, that's but right. I didn't really get that. And I so, never, I, I agree with you because there was, it, it was sold. It was sold poorly, you know. Even S One W's doing that kind of shuffle, yeah. Uh, and Big Daddy Kane and his dancers. It was. It, it really. It could have been mm. salvaged and celebrated, yeah. Couldn't it? But, but it was a fashion thing back then, was it? It was the eighties. Mm. Everything was a fashion thing, mm. and breaking was classed then, maybe not so much as part of a culture as hip hop. You know, it was classed as a fashion thing, and and the UK has always been very move on, fast from fashion. Always, always, yeah. yeah. Whereas when we went out to Europe in mm. the late nineteen eighties, mm. you know, especially went to Germany, mm. they were still like, you know, breaking was still well, like embraced. Yeah, 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 yeah Part yeah. of hip hop culture that it blew my mind. Yeah, I, I found it strange that how that was. Yeah. You know, people in the UK would have kind of like, no, oh, you can't do that anymore. That's not part of all the other elements of, of hip hop were embraced in the UK. Graffiti. Yeah, that's right. MCing, you know, yeah. beatboxing, but breaking was kind of ostracised in the late nineteen eighties in the UK. Doesn't it's make quite, sense. It doesn't make sense. No. So, with that in mind, and it's in part was what I was coming to. You've expressed your influences of the time when you started, but if you were on your own, who who were your main influences? Each other, <laughs> really. We we had ideas about how we wanted to progress moves. So, really, from obviously we. Um, from seeing the New York City Breakers videos, the uncut stuff that I didn't see um, till quite a w- way after, say, the, the London guys, because mm. um, I think it was Buddha who gave them those videos around about 85. I mean, we didn't see that till Peter Edwards from GMC come to Bournemouth in late 86 when we had this sort of flat that we were all living around, this sort of like bed sit thingy. Oh, please tell me. <laughs> please tell me it was <laughs> the, like a, a piece the B-boy centre. It was, yeah, of, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. There, there was a couple bad. of doors uh, hanging off the wall where Dara ripped a few doors off. <laughs> that is but, amazing. Um, but yeah, we're all kind of living, we were kind of like <laughs> hanging out together and that. And Peter come to Bournemouth because we were still in contact with him um, and he brought these videos down late 86. And I, you know, we got a hold of Nick at the time. It was just about the time that Nick was joining about September 86 with Wayne. Wow. Um, and, and they showed us these New York City Breakers shit videos of President Show and, and all that. And, you know, obviously um, we didn't we couldn't make copies of them, but obviously we were impressed by that power. Then we saw it the once, you know, so we weren't mega influenced and we'd already started to develop our own style by, by then. We'd had our mm. own dreams of moves. So we were like, you know, Nick was like, you know, thinking of, you know, how can I change breaking? You know, I want to do Flair, Halo, Flair. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah, do yeah. Headspin 90. I want to do all these mm, other kind mm, of moves, you know. Yeah. People, you know, we didn't see a lot of that other stuff, like ball head spin and stuff, until the early 90s, until I, I got um, given those videos of, through the Australian guys. You were a beast with the head spin, bro, <laughs> like beast. Well, yeah, I mean, me and John kind of practised a lot. We had our, inf- you know, we watched a lot of videos back then. We, you know, there was obviously little bits and bobs. If you watch Body Rock, there's a guy doing a bit of a glide in that. You know, obviously I saw people doing ticks like... Um, Sly from um, Rock City. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a guy from. Um, there was a few guys around. You know, obviously there was the London guys who do, do ticks and stuff. And you know there was early influences. People that were pieces of the puzzle. You know, mm. um, yeah. I mean, like I said, London All Stars come to our town. They did a little show there, so we saw little bits and bobs in. Mm. D- Dolby did a little bit of an open leg head spin that was an inspiration to me. Um, and then obviously there, I saw people like Rock City. And then I saw, you know, New York City Breakers later on with Little Alex and stuff Crazy. like that. Yeah. So kind of all those pieces, you cut, you know, and I, then it was my biggest inspiration I saw like in 86, which was Peter Edwards, mm. who had the most head spin in the UK in 1986. 86. So he, could, he was the first person I saw, you know, do that shape, the, the shape like yes, this. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, almost like Egyptian looking yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, had, he had that half shape. So he was, yeah. so he was obviously, you know, I, at that time I could do ticks into about 10 glide, but I didn't have the shape. And if you watch the film, I explain that how my dream after 86 was to try to, you know, 
you know, kick into the, you know, I thought, yeah, how can you do a continuous drill? I mean, me and John used to talk about this. We used to spray it on the pads of our hats, 30 drill, you know, so it's like That's a psychological thing incredible. to try and come up with ideas. And we all had ideas, you know, Daryl had ideas, you know, Acer had ideas for moves with the halos. We all mm. wanted to push breaking, you know, and we had that time to do it because from that, 87, 88 era up until, you know, 1990, 91, 92, there was so little going on in the mm. world that it was kind of, you know, it wasn't until we went out to Germany in 89, mm. if you watched the film, when yeah. I met Akin Walter, when he was writing Battle in squad. London. And, and, he, and they we fucking met loved that. you, man. Don't they did, yeah. Yeah, and we inspired those guys a lot. You know, obviously, we um, we were doing stuff that they'd never seen before. At that point, they say it in the video, they were very much like the French, mm. quite bouncy and slow. Mm. Um, although you know, massive respect to French, you know, actor force. Yeah, they, again, they had a different style again. Badass yeah, as well. Yeah, I had... mean, all these guys, man. That's what's crazy. Yeah. I think what I think what um, it's relatable. What, what I'm going to say is, is what beatboxing was for a lot of people mm. when I came on the scene doing what I was doing. I think I think for a lot of people it was the surprise of like, oh, you're still doing that? Hey, that's really good. How did you do that? You, what, you've been working on it on your own in there? <laughs> all that, on your own? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot for people to take in. And I remember when seeing you guys, uh, Knowledge Yourself, I think I saw you at Battle of the Year, I got performed at Battle of the Year. I think that was the, 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 the most um, en engaging thought of it all, was the, the idea that these people were just doing it mm. And it got to such a level on their own momentum. Mm. It was almost like you were ready built to take yeah. on any event. Yeah, like... we, yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, we had like a because we had we were such a tight unit and we all loved breaking so much. So we were we had like a ready built crew. So when breaking did resurge along in the early nineties again, we were there to kind of come back and step back in. We were never really that interested in competitions, to be honest with you. We just did it to bring the scene alive, yeah. to help the scene yeah. grow again, you know. Yeah. Obviously, when Hooch did the, the champs, mm. you know, we we were the, there the first couple of years to do that. Killed battle it multiple the... times <laughs> as well. Like, this isn't just like, oh, you know, you fucking nailed yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> Battle of the Year, we actually won the first Battle of the Year. Yeah. Uh, when Nick and John did, when it was, um, the Euro it was actually called the European Breakdance Cup. When it was, yeah, before, Back then? Wow. Before it was Battle Didn't of the Year, that. yeah. So um, Nick and John won that um, with the with, they joined up with some guys um, from Germany called um, TDB to die breaking, which is Kai Eichmann mm -hmm. and some other guys. So that's what crews did back then. Um, they kind of joined up together mm. as a super crew to sort of you know the dream team, the dream team. Yeah. So that's kind of what, what happened. But, but yeah, we had time to develop our own style. We did that through the eighties into nineties. You know, there's Ace with the halos, Daryl with all his you know knowing the continuous knowing the pop outs yeah, all yeah, that yeah, brutal yeah. power. You know, Nick with the combos, John Crazy. as well. You know, John for his size, you know, beast, six, absolute you know, beast for a six floor. foot two guy, big guy. He yeah. was pretty amazing, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, but a lot. That's why his breaking looks so good because he's so big. Yeah, yeah, and people, yeah. you know, yeah. people can't do stuff like that being as big as he is. I've never seen anybody do head spins now. That's I get goosebumps <laughs> thinking about you. Yeah. Not fucking move, bro. Like, and I said it before we we jumped on. Like, the identity of individuals, like. The formation, the, the way you guys look, like these are real informative years for me. And like, I can't give you the flower. Thank you, thank you. Because <laughs> it's like you have with so many different characters. Like, it was a, it was a sign of assurance that you were in the room. Mm. Shit was going to get dealt. Mm. It was going to be a wicked night. Yeah. It was in the moment. I just, all of you guys, like, you were always approachable, always friendly, thank you. always chilled. Yeah. You'd take the fucking floor out, though, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just about that we, we just loved dancing. And that there's not... We'd never had an agenda. We never thought we were ever going to be, like, big. We never we never had any aspirations of being famous or respected, you know, through the hip-hop scene. We just liked the dancing. Because when we were breaking, because it was kind of removed from hip-hop at that point, we mm. weren't really, you know, although mm. we listened to the music... You know, we, we were just breaking then, you know, because hip hop was still going on with everything else. But like we've already spoke about, because it was kind of removed a bit and, you know, mm. worldwide. Well, I mean, America was like that a bit as well. You know, not so much Europe. Mm. As I said, you know, you could just yeah. go to France and Germany. It was still part of the culture. And Hungary as well. And Hungary as well. Yeah, you not forget. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, Enemy Squad and guys like that. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. you know, that lots of people contributed to breaking and we did contribute a lot, um, you know, 
progressing with moves and we put a lot of work in. We really, really did. We really, really we, did. We did fucking practice our arse yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind me saying, we did, we did really, we were totally obsessed with breaking, especially yeah. in the late 1980s into the no early 90s, you know. But, you know, and um, obviously other things come along in our lives afterwards, but... Oh, uh, that's stuff. You know, when, stuff. You know I, I don't often talk about breaking, really, um, but when I do, that old passion comes back, mm. that old energy, as you mm. can see, mm -hmm. it's still there. <laughs> that... <laughs> that's what we like on the podcast. We <laughs> so, set them free um, so, over yeah, here. It kind of comes back when I start talking about all the great things we did. What's it do to you? What's that feeling now? What you're, exp you're expressing right now, what's that, what is that feeling? It's a feeling of, like, um, you know, um, we're ready... You know, we can, we can, we can bring it. It's that feeling now. I feel that we can always, we, you know, even if we're together, it. we can always bring it. Yeah, you know, we're we're older guys now. I mean, I, I we could go to an event and get event and get down and bring it now. Really? Yeah, it's God, still there. I love that. I mean, shit. I you know, I still break. We, you know, you know, me and Nick and John still break together. You know, yeah, you know, we can still do pretty much everything we could do back in the day. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm 53 now. I'm in London Irish. I'm not going to be doing you know flare edge fin flare, but we can do a lot of the basic power moves still to quite a high level. Yeah. So yeah, um, I think a lot of people will be uh, quizzing the injury aspect of it. And as you get older, yeah, some of these maybe reoccurring, yeah, war wounds of yeah, you know, d d d is that is that a thing as you get older and break? Um, I, I don't really get. I mean, I, I break a little bit now, a couple of times a week if I can get round to it. You know, if there's not life getting in the way. Um, but injuries, yeah, I mean, I've had some serious injuries. Anybody who's ever danced at a high level will have had serious injuries, otherwise you never dance at a high level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's as yeah, simple yeah. as that. Um, probably the most serious injury I had, I ruptured um, my adductor muscle, which is the groin one, uh, pulled it away from the bone around about, if you watch the film, we talk about it mm. in the sort of spring of 1990. So really, for power moves, it kind of kept me out for over a year, really. Um, I didn't ever, I, I wasn't ever actually supposed to dance again after that. Really? <laughs> I got really? Told you. But I did come back, so I didn't care. No, I think anybody who's who's ever really um, danced at high levels had you know bad injuries. That was the kind of worst one I've ever had. I, I've had. Did that scare you? That must have scared you. Probably. It did a bit, yeah, because it hurt for such a long time, and um, it was so painful. And I was so young, and and I couldn't break for properly for quite a while. And um, I'd been used to breaking since I was about fourteen, fifteen. Suddenly, that taken away from you when you're twenty one. It's um. It's, it's, it was the time I realised that when I went back to breaking again, that I needed something else, mm. you know, in life, mm. other things to do, because I'd spent all of my youth mm. breaking five or six years. When I had to stop, I had this massive hole in my life. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to do other things besides breaking. I think we've all experienced so, that in one form So, yeah. So, so yeah. you know, I, I come back from that. I've had a few other bad ones. I had a shoulder injury that I needed surgery on. Um, we've all had, you know, Nick's had knee problems. Um, that we've all had, Dow's had wrist problems. We've all had, but we've kind of, you know, um, got over them over the years. I mean, I, I probably had the most serious injuries out of them all, but <laughs> it's probably me spinning on my head so much. But I've never really had any neck problems. I mean, that's interesting. Yeah, you've had any neck problems. Yeah, that, that, that's the most obvious kind of. Yeah, with the head spins. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, like, yeah. Like, and you would. You, and the other genius thing is you wouldn't just go fast, you'd go really slow as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think the pressure on the head and neck, I mean, how did you even, this is some real naive questions here, but even feeling giddy or dizzy after it, you know, you've got 300 plus people all around a circle watching it. It's really strange. If, you, if you're doing like spinny moves a lot, you don't get giddy. So if you're doing head spins and you're regularly doing, you know, you're practicing all the time back then, the giddiness wears off, you kind of get used to it. If you don't do a head spin for like a month, you go and do one, and I'll be I'll be really giddy because really? I haven't done one for ages. It's strange. It's like your your brain gets accustomed to that spinning feeling, and also um, you when you do it a lot, you have like a spatial awareness of exactly where you are and exactly where you're spinning on the floor. It's 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 like a um, when you talk about dancing, um, Storm always talks about it, spatial awareness. Some people mm. have that a lot. So when they get down, if you're going to do power and on a high level and a lot of it, you need to have a really good spatial awareness. Like mm. we break in circles. You've probably seen in clubs. Yeah. It's tight. It's, Tiny it's so shit. tight, you know, and yeah. Ace is like doing like windmills into halos and, yeah, yeah. you know, and coming out into freezes and not touching anybody, you know. And that's we're, the coolest shit. Yeah, you know, and, and, and no one's getting clipped or anything. That, that's kind of, that. you only get that from breaking a lot, you know, mm. and training a lot, you know. I can. Oh god! I could just sit and talk about this all <laughs> like, fucking day. I can. Day. It's, it's really I strange. It. Like, like in battles and that we've had with people in the past. It, you, if you break a lot, anybody tell this? You, somebody hit the floor, and and when they hit the floor, you can tell, what, um, almost that they're 
that you can beat them straight away. Other people that I've danced against, uh, I, before they've even danced almost, you can say, yeah, that's not gonna, they're not going to be able to do they're it tonight. Gonna... Because they haven't put the hours in. They haven't, put the, yeah. they haven't either got the practice in or they haven't got the spatial awareness and they haven't got enough to the table. Whereas some people come on, typical crew that I used to, I just thought was awesome in the Flesh's Act or Force. Mm. You know, they come on, you know, say Kareem, yeah. he's dead now, bless him, um, he's an amazing dancer. Rest in but peace. But he, he come out and, and with that, you know, that top rock as it is, mm. and like, before he'd even gone down, you're like, this dude. This is serious. Yeah, you just know it when you're a b-boy and you've danced like, this guy's got that flavour. He's aware of where he is, he's aware mm. of his body, his shape, he's mm. got that style, he's got that flavour, mm. and he's going to get down now. And you Self-awareness, just, yeah, isn't yeah, it? You just know that. And it's that's a, that's an unspoken language of competitive sport, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so that and dance. It, it, it's in dance. Well, Maurizio talks about it in our film when he says about you know, you almost have a certain vibe with each other. When we met him, he had that same that same energy, that same vibe. When someone's braked on a high level and danced and trained a lot, that they have this vibe about them. You can tell when mm. they even when they're stretching up. When they're mucking about, like, oh, okay, you're 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 serious, you're you're proper. Whereas some people, cool, when they're, they're some people just do a cut of shovels, they're like, yeah, you ain't you ain't no man, you ain't cut, it. <laughs> you ain't gonna cut it, no. You brought so you guys brought so much to the table in break dancing for its time. Um, like you know, you mentioned Maurizio and Storm and all these dons, right? Like yeah. you were embraced in Europe, as as you mentioned. What was the feeling inside the camp at the time? You guys were pretty much being scooped out of the south of England, <laughs> and celebrated in a way that you just you weren't in the UK. I mean, what was that feeling like? It was pretty amazing. I mean, the first time we went out there, it was pretty amazing. It was like, um, it, there was a lot going on culturally in the world as well. I mean, the first time we went to Germany when Akin Volt invited us out, we stayed at his house the weekend and we went to this jam in Munich and it was the same um, weekend that the Berlin Wall came down. Mm -hmm. So it was a really like strange area Huge in, in Germany culturally as well. Mm. So, um, so yeah, it was when we went out there and we met all these people that were... Germany was the first place I went to, this will sound strange to you, where when I did a head spin and people clapped. So I'd never experienced that in the UK. What, clapping to the rhythm? Yeah, no, they, they clap when you've done a move. So basically, you know, you go there and you do a head spin or you do a move and you come out of it and they start clapping like that and I'd be like... Wow. <laughs> I never experienced... You know, you get people dogging in the UK, didn't you? Like, yeah, you yeah. go into a nightclub. Ooh, yeah. ooh, but obviously, yeah. Germany was a little bit... Well, it's just culturally different to the UK. Whereas, yeah. you know, it was just different. It, you know, it, well, just different. Yeah. That's all I can say. So you go there and people would clap your moves and I'd be like, mm. this is really strange, you know. In the UK, it would be like just a nod. And yeah, and I'm mm. like that. Yeah, yeah, you're dope. Mm. Whereas, you know, because mm. people just wanted to be cool, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hip hop culture. Yeah, totally. But obviously, they had a different hip hop culture in Germany. And when people used to clap when we used to do moves, I mean, me and John used to look at each other and be like, did that just happen? Yeah. Did, did you? yeah. <laughs> all, there was also an attitude to the audiences then. I, like, just going back to beatboxing at some of these events, UK would have. <laughs> you'd, they, you'd be in some like club eros uh, oh there's a token break dancing the audience does not know what's going on all of a sudden someone does the funky worm or done some weird mincing with a vodka and coke you know yeah Germany the audience felt it felt like they were well tuned in yeah like they they yeah. knew what yeah. they yeah. were watching yeah yeah and people if you used to go to those hip hop jams in Germany a lot of those people used to travel not just to see you know you know, maybe the, the rap acts yeah. or the graffiti, they wanted to travel to see the B-Boys. Yeah. There was there was quite a fan club in Europe through Switzerland, yeah. you know, Italy, for seeing that that underground European B-Boy thing because yeah. it was so underground at the time, mm. you know. And, and luckily, we kind of joined that in the late 1980s. We were lucky enough to be part of that. Mm. You know, see, you know, jams like Nick and John Nasa break that, like CH Fresh, mm. you know. And we were lucky enough to be part of that. And also, we were lucky enough... When, you know, the say the UK is in a resurgence of breaking caught up, we were lucky enough to be part of that still, mm -hmm. even though we were kind of in our mid to late 20s by that point. Yeah, so, but you guys looked like soldiers by then. You, you guys were just like brutes. <laughs> like, yeah, Hooch says that, doesn't he, in the film? Yeah, I did. Yes, he does. He, oh, yeah, he says that, Marines, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's true. You, you kind of walk in like, you know, like, you know what it reminds me of? It's like, you know how rugby players, they, they, they dress up before they dress down. In the, yeah. They go, when they go into battle yeah. they were in a rugby stuff beforehand they were in a city there was this there was this kind of secret agent charm thank about you, you guys you. yeah we, we, we i mean we were you know we, we did take our we weren't serious um when we practiced really 
because you know if you're too serious when you practice then it doesn't it's not fun anymore mm. so breaking about us is always about having fun always mm. about having a laugh but when we used to go somewhere um you know that was something that say when nick and wayne come into the crew we talk about in the film that they made us a bit more serious when mm. it comes to having a battle yeah. or we had to get down properly we yeah. were all a bit more serious they had that. real butch yeah yeah yeah, you know, so, and, you know, and obviously Daryl and Acer had that as well. Yeah. We all had that, you know, some more than others. But, you know, when it was time for the battle, um, and, and especially Acer, you know, Acer always used to bring mm. it in the battles. He had this toughness. He's a hard guy anyhow, mate. He's a tough guy. So um, he's, he wasn't just good at breaking. He was good at fighting as well. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, um, you know, nice. um, it's, it's that's, that's the sort of gypsy in him really, you know, as yeah. I spoke about earlier on. Um, but yeah, he, you know, we, we brought that that seriousness to our break, and it was the only time we ever were really when we used to go because if pe- people used to turn up and they were serious and they were challenging us, like looking at us, we were like, okay, we're mm-hmm. we're this group of guys. We knew each other's characters inside out. Mm-hmm. We knew that, you know, if we had a move that we couldn't do, there was somebody else behind us who could yeah. come in and, you know, you know, that's what's all about. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? We that's, always, that's we, you know, although we could do all the moves. We always had somebody who had that move at a higher level. So there was obviously Acer, who was pretty untouched with the halos. Mm-hmm. You know, me with the head spin, Nick with the combos, Daryl with that raw, brutal flavour. John that had that, you know, that bigness about him that used to bring. So he used to bring that huge windmill mm, in. It's yeah. so big and he used to spread out, you know. Crazy. And, and everybody's like, this yeah, guy's yeah, yeah. massive. My God, look at that windmill. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> just untouchable yeah, shit. Yeah. Bro. And then like, he used to jump cold. over with, you know, be doing like 30 halos. Like, you know, well, I mean, when he, we went out to Europe, people had never seen really halos like he had. But they'd never seen head spins like that. I mean, no, you know, they hadn't, no, no, no. They'd never seen, like, <laughs> and I just remember it. As soon as that hat came on, all like all the thoughts was like, it's fucking game time. He's gonna do it. You know what I mean? That shit was incredible. I mean, to get to that level, we did. I did practice a lot, mate. The, the drills, uh, seriously, yeah. you know, um, they're harder to get than say ticks into part into like open leg head spins. The drill section on from that is actually harder to get than than, than mm. the first part. Mm. So I did, and obviously nobody had really done it until I, you know, tried it. I mean, I I'd done seven or eight. You know, most people can fluke up to 10, mm. it, you know, on a straight drill. You can fluke up to 10, you can do that. But over 10... Okay, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now. I mean, you know, I'd seen people back in the day, you know, you know, do fluke ones and do like, you know, a 10 long one. But but to do, um, you know, reliable over 15, 20, you'd need a technique for that. Yeah. And I speak about that in the film, about yeah. using your arms. It wasn't till 87 that I discovered that you had to use your arms and kind of steer yourself when you're in that position That's with your crazy. arms. That's crazy. So that, and that was like a trial and error thing, you know? So obviously I, I spoke about my influences, you know, and we, you know, even in the early 90s, you know, there was, you know, because obviously Orko bought the ball head spin to Europe. I speak about that video the first mm-hmm. time I saw it. I gave it to, you know, Storm and Swift. Um, in the autumn of 1990, and that's how that got into Europe. The ball head's been wow. through that through that show with that yeah. famous show of Buck Four and yeah, Kuriaki yeah, yeah. and Orko and Oswald. It's in the doc again. Yeah, there's bits of it in the doc. You can you yeah. can check that out online as well because it's um, that's a very influential show. And um, Orko's even left out those guys now, yeah. so it's um, it's worth it's worth watching. Yeah. Um, you said something quite profound um, before we recorded. Um, you said. I'm at peace with my hip hopness, pretty much. Like <laughs> I am, yeah. Explain, explain that a little bit more, because of the age that I think I, I am, you are, we all get to. It, it there is this moment of clarity where uh, you think it till you become it. Yeah. And you are going down this journey yeah. all the time yeah. of being inspired by your peers, trying seeking approval from your peers. Then all of a sudden you are a peer, mm. and then all of a sudden. Oh shit! I am, I am kind of hip hop now. Aren't I? <laughs> it's kind of that. You know what it's mean. Everybody's had that in hip hop, whether it be breaking or you kind of fall in and out of love of it, don't you? Mm. One minute you've got all this energy, mm. and then something comes along, or somebody comes along that's maybe negative or a negative situation that kind of drains you, mm. and then you kind of think, oh, why am I doing this? Why am I into this? Mm. Why do I like this still? But I think as I've got older, you know, with the records and the breaking, I kind of I'm, you know, I've had times in my life where I'm, oh, I'm over that man. But then it comes back, it always comes back to me. Just when I thought I was out, it comes back to me. And, and I kind of, how can I say, accepted now I'm you know, 53 years old that it's part of me. Mm. And I'm at peace with that now. Mm. It doesn't, I, I don't have to be over it or not over it. Mm. It's part of me. It is yeah. what I am. So, you know, I've, I've reached that. It's quite a nice place to be in, in this sort of journey of life as in like I'm at peace with myself and, and where I stand in like breaking a nip on mm. It doesn't, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm at peace with it. So it's good. <laughs> 
as breakers, I think you're the most aggressive characters on the planet. <laughs> your egos are all over the shop. Do, do, do you ever feel ch- challenged about your hip hopness within the community, the scene? Is this a is this a thing that is that more of the uh, at peace at peace? Uh, I don't vibe? know. Maybe we. I, I think that's some of this because uh, you know everybody goes through trials and tribulations in life out of you know, breaking or hip hop, that's what we're talking about now. But obviously the other things that happen in your life influence mm. what you're doing in life. You know, mm. as you get older, more and more stuff yeah. gets in the way, doesn't it? Yeah. From we spoke about it earlier about your beatboxing. Yeah. When you were young, that's all you did, like me with breaking. But when you get older, you suddenly get responsibilities mm. and you know, and that maybe waters down your feeling of of like, you know, of yeah. where you are in hip hop. But yeah, there comes a point when you get older that I think that you, uh, for me, I'm sort of, I know where I am, I know what I like, mm. I know what I want to do, mm. I still like breaking, I still love it, I still want to do it now and again. Yeah. So I don't feel that I've got any pressure now to, you know, keep practising to the point where I've got to snap my neck in half because I've, I've done everything I wanted to do, you know, we made the film, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, that, just, and that was a form yeah. of closure for me, the film as well. Not as in like my end of breaking, but there's, there's our document, that's mm. everything we did. Mm. You know, we've got all our best sort of stuff that yeah. we did. That tells our story. and You own it. Yeah, this is yeah, it. Yeah, this is yeah. it. And, and, you know, you can watch that if you, if you like people. You know, that's our story. And we did a lot, you know. I mean, maybe other people who, who... I'd said that to people who kind of maybe moan a little bit about their place in breaking that now. I've said to them, look, tell your story. Yeah. Get you it out to. there. You have to. You know, d- you know, d- just, just that's what I did. Mm. Instead of saying to people, people who say to me about, oh, this and this. Yeah, but we did this. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So tell your story. You know, make make something. That's what I did. That's why I wanted to make people emotional because we yeah. made that film and got our bit out there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting yeah. excited again. Aren't I? No, no, I <laughs> fucking love it. I'm, I'm getting passionate it. again. But, but this is the thing. It's um, I, I I love a good Covent Garden story, and I think the whole era is so charming. It, it warms me to yeah. know that that the, these the people are still alive that were there. That's yeah. incredible in itself. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, where's the genuine? documentation of that that yeah. the people 20 years from now can be like that that because it's I, such a given now yeah i think it? it's a little bit sad because obviously um we i bought a video camera in 1989 and i started filming this but back then breaking and i've spoken to other b-boys from the london era about this that the people didn't want to be filmed back then mm. they were worried about get you know buy in and stuff mm, mm. you know Purvis has mentioned this that you know people mm. even when I started filming big up Purvis as well yeah, yeah big up Purvis even when I started filming Second to None you know there were got you know guys in the crew against it oh don't do it man you know we can't get our you know yeah, so and it was a secretive because breaking was so secretive back then yeah and people John so didn't I, want to be filmed I remember there's a moment yeah. in the dock where he yeah. was like turn the camera off yeah turn yeah. the camera off so so yeah, I understand why there isn't that much stuff because I've seen stuff breaking of London of London you know from back in the day and I saw higher level stuff than that happening with my own eyes, but it's not on camera. The same with Street Machine, I saw higher level happening, not on camera. Wow. So, you know, like UK Fresh, none of that's on camera. You know, like I saw yes, Street true. Machine break at that and I saw the Madden Brothers, you know, for the Belfast City Breakers break out doing crazy stuff. Mm. None of it's on camera. Because back then, you know, you, like me when I bought a camera in 89, you know, my I think, don't think my dad spoke to me for like two weeks. I spent like all my savings, a thousand pounds. On a video camera. That's how Wait, much was he was screwing. Like. Yeah, he was like, he was like, what, what are you doing? Why are you spending? A good? And I'm, I think my mum at the time was like, oh, leave him alone. You know, it's, what, it's his money. Let's it's do the new the mod con, Dad. But, but, but yeah, on. so eighty nine, you know, for, to go out and spend thousand pounds on a video mm. camera back then, people, a lot of people didn't have that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't until I went to Germany and I saw Storm and Swift filming everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah Probably yeah. even them going to the toilet, yeah, yeah, and I realised yeah, yeah, these yeah. guys are getting that documentation. They're getting. Yeah evidence of what they did wow. I realised how important it was for us to do that yeah man for me to film the Harewood in the documentary yeah because yeah. if that wasn't there that being the backbone of the film we wouldn't have any you know, you know how can I say it when you, when you if you were talking to b-boys you know they they un- know about history Tim would know about history say so I remember that yeah. what Street Machine did because we were there we saw yeah. it around us but Tim. if you if you okay. talk to other people that weren't there and didn't see it they'd just be like oh okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah got yeah. on film whatever you, you understand what I mean yeah of course so I do, yeah. you know it's we we're lucky that we had that that yeah. we filmed it we're lucky that we had that yeah for sure you've always been into filming editing and. Not really. I mean, it's obviously it's Charlie Marbles is, you know, he did all the editing on that and Nathan did the interviews with me and obviously other people helped with some. I tracked down a lot of the some of those shows 
I didn't take them all, you know, I tracked the originals down and Swift Rock helped it's me. incredible with some of the research in that. It, really it did is. take a lot of... Um, a lot of bribing, <laughs> a lot of send because I a lot of sending trainers to people and yeah. back scratching to get because one of the shows that we we have in the film is the Coupol show in Switzerland that, um, that's from ninety one and I had a copy of that but it was really really grainy and it was really bad quality so Zed um, an old friend of ours he was mm. in Second to None like I can remember from mm -hmm. um, he was um, he's original member of Spartan Rockers and um, basically another another I can't remember his other crew. Anyhow, a bit of a legend he is in Switzerland. He's like the best. He managed to track down that video for me. That's um, the original copy from the guy who filmed it. So I was kind of lucky. The same with CH Fresh. Um, mm. Swift Rock had had it from two different angles. So I managed to catch. So if you watch the film, it's from two different angles. So we've got the close up. Yeah. We've got the distance. And, and then so rare, man. And then we were getting right to the end of the film. And this guy from Southampton said to me, oh, he contacted me and said, oh, I've got this video of you guys breaking um, from 1987 at, this, at the nightclub in Southampton called The Top Rank. And I'm like, really? And it was right at the end of the film. Anyway, I came up with this video. Somebody had filmed it on an old school camera. And it's us guys breaking in 87 at The Top Rank in Southampton. That's so it's got me, Nick. It's got me, Nick, and Daryl on it, and a few other people. Adam throwing down. Yeah, okay, I, yeah, I'm bigged up Adam. Have I? I've got to mention Adam. Big up Adam. Yeah, because he, he brought a lot yeah. of energy to the crew, you know, yeah. and that crazy footwork style of his and his. Everybody had a different style, you know, and and Adam mm. brought an energy that was different to anybody else's. Uh, big up Adam. Yeah, all yeah. day. Well, yeah. The whole crew. I mean, it was just an arsenal of fucking power. <laughs> um, uh, you you alluded to the fact that you know you saw it with your own eyes. Yeah. This is part of an, a, a wider apprenticeship, I feel, with yeah. with sport and art, you know, and yeah. the competitive spirit of it. It's that fear of missing out, yeah. and um, yeah, sure. Nowadays, as we, as we can clearly see, um, everything's documented it is, um, yeah. to the point of it could be defined yeah. as cheating. You yeah, because you don't show up. You watch. Yeah. You yeah. wait until it goes online. Yeah. Shit like that. But uh, I would say that. For its time, you being there, okay, you don't get the, the copy for the documentary, but this is part of your apprenticeship. You saw things that other people wouldn't, yeah. couldn't. And, yeah. and you, you take that with you, you store it, and then all of a sudden you put it into your style. It's a whole different proposition. It, it was so different breaking back then to now, really. Everything changes, nothing stays the same. It, it can't do, you know, you, you can't live in the past. But the energy back then... Um, the, the rawness of breaking, the the kind of you never knew what was going to come along next. So, but you know, you you get to go to a breaking competition, you know what, but you've seen their videos on the mm. net, you know. Every, back then, you never knew what was going to happen yeah, if you yeah. went to a jam. Back then, you yeah. never knew who was going to bring it, yeah. especially at, you know when you if you come to London or you went to you know in the, you know you just didn't know what was going to happen. So um, you know, even the New York guys talk about that. You know, if it's, when I spoke to Quickstep, he always said to me, you know, that you just mm. never knew he was going to mm. turn up back in the day. Mm. You just, you know, there'd be some crazy guy, you'd, you'd never see him again. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it was like that, you know, that was what, well, one of the things I found exciting about it, the yeah. spontaneity of it. The spontaneity yeah, of it. Yeah, Dude, I remember, sticking on the subject of videos and documenting, like, I remember seeing that Style Elements um, video come yeah. through the doors of Bongos. I'm like, I'm having that <laughs> now. To see those guys do it from an American standpoint. Yeah. It was just, a, it was, it, I was dumbfounded. I was yeah. like, yeah, these guys are, uh, in America, they're doing it like that? Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you, I think that was part of the second wave you mentioned, but you, I, I, I remember, you know, a couple of jams where it was real novel to see you guys breaking for its time. This, the, this um, added value of America getting involved It did, involved yeah. Well. yeah they, they changed, style elements changed breaking yeah. around that time. They bought it a different style. They made other things possible. Yeah. We were traditional breakers. We we liked that old school New yeah. York flavour. Yeah. That's what we like. We still like it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Style Elements bought that different. They bought that West Coast flavour in because some of those guys were like freestyle dancers. That's right. Before they were b boys, so they bought that in as well. And then obviously, you know, they you know there were you know if you speak to like Remind the you know he, you know he said to me we used to watch videos of you guys. You know, that tape that went around Europe, mm. we used to watch Battle Squad, we used to watch Active Force. So they kind of watched us guys mm. and, and watched what we were doing. Because obviously we would like that, you know, you had the 1980s break in, then you had the progression past that, mm. you know, of us guys with Active Force, Battle Squad, Enemy Squad, you know, yeah. all those crews yeah. trying to progress break in. And obviously those guys saw that, bought that West Coast flavour with it and bought something else to the table yeah, yeah. with their own style and and that, and they've kind of reinvented breaking, you know? Yeah, it's really strange because 
we hung out with those guys when they won Battle of the Year, um, I think it's 97, we were hung out with those guys and we went out on the town afterwards and celebrated with really? them. Really? So it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing. We kind of went full circle, really, here, that we just weird how, how they won that competition at night. They had nowhere to go afterwards. John had his camper van. So the next thing you know, we're driving around Frankfurt, having a few drinks, celebrating. Stop it. Was, it. it was really weird. Is that how it goes out? Like, is, because I imagine this. I, I, it was really strange how that happened. Really? Yeah, how we... how And I'd met those guys... Um, a little bit earlier in the year, because I went to the B-Boy Summit um, in early 97 and I'd met um, Donny um, Crumbs and I'd mm. met Jay Rock and that. I hadn't re met Remind. He's incredible, incredible breakdancers, people. If you yeah. haven't Googled that shit, yeah. uh, you've just got to get involved. All of them, yeah. Probably what, they're all amazing. I mean, I mean, for me, they're all amazing out of assignments, but for me, I mean, the, the most original, my favourite dance was Remind. Remind yeah, 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 yeah. I just... just Beast. Yeah. yeah. He's a nice guy as well. We chat that again, so. Good. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Um, yeah. I feel like people who come across... No, it's not, let me just stick to what I was going to say. You guys are the OK sign for a lot of people when it comes to breakdancing in the UK. Um, you're, 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 you've got an assurance there. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I think for a lot of people outside... Uh, of 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 the UK, it's because you were the only ones doing it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, uh, the buck kind of stops with them yeah. in a lot of respect. Yeah. So far as UK breakdancing yeah. goes, you've really fa held, held the flag. To, yeah. To, and, yeah. And hit hit some serious as a crew. Countries. Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah. And for for us, you know, we were never it really about individual members it right. was a crew it's for a us crew. so that's why we never even at the uk champs that's why we really never entered the individuals mm. for us it was about a crew thing crew. you know I so i saw you separate no i, I mean did. yeah i mean acer did it a bit but we were like if you know i i think acer could have won the early ones if not nick you know obviously evo was there but obviously we just wanted to enter the crew thing. Mm. And, and if you and we Because all of you could kick ass. All of you could Yeah, and if, if you gave everything to the crew thing, that that's what it was about for us, you know. So you know, I, I think we could have bought it on the on the individual one, but it was about crew for us, you know, and everybody repped. Obviously, you know, Evo did his thing that was amazing at that time. And mm. you know, he was about for him it was more about winning the single. Mm. For us it was more about doing the crew. Mm. You know, and, and the early UK champs was fun. We enjoyed ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, it was nice to be part of that and nice to go up on stage and finally be cheered mm -hmm. <laughs> after all the years of being dissed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, that's a good feeling as so, well, isn't so, it? So, yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, and obviously later on in breaking, I, I learned a lot of other things. Obviously, I said to you, my only inspiration was New York City Breakers, but mm -hmm. when I went to New York in the late 90s, you know, I got schooled. I afterwards had to talk about Quick Step. Mm -hmm. Because he schooled me a lot about New York history and told me about Incredible Breakers wow. and told me about Float and, um, you know, and how good Incredible Breakers were. Chino, Bryant, all those guys who kind of went on to sort of be my heroes, really. Mm. <laughs> because that they, that for me, they were the, well, and for him, they were best in New York. I think they were best. You know, this, and this is the thing, see, that the, 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 the information that's stored, and I always think yeah. about this with all the guests that come to, but the information that's stored in your head, it's... it's Irreplaceable. And this is all my opinions, by the way. Somebody else can disagree with it. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they think somebody else is better or whatever, but for me, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. 100%. Um, all right, nuts and bolts of it all. Um, most intense uh, battle you've ever been in. <laughs> I knew you could ask me that. It's got to be. I, I, um, oh, I don't know, really. What, what can I What can I say? We've had quite a few. Um... Christ. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we've got all the time in the world, yeah. my friend. Here we it's are. Got like, you, yeah. I know, there's, there's, so, there's, there's, I mean, so many. One, ones I was in, involved in, you know, some of the, um, I'd say some of the ones we had out in Europe, um, some of the ones we had with, um, you know, Storm and Swift and that, whether they were battles or act or force, you know, they weren't really battles really, because those, we kind of, we just pushed each other back then. It, there wasn't really so much needle in it, maybe. Mm -hmm. Later on, there might have been. I don't know, but we were there was never any animosity there because at the time there were so few people doing it that everybody was friends. We just wanted to mm. push the art form and keep it alive, you know. There yeah. wasn't really any beefs by the early late eighties, nineties, because you were so happy to meet somebody else that was still breaking. It was like, You're my friend, you're still breaking. That's break. amazing. It's like some so, tribe discovery. Isn't so it? so yeah, we we I don't know. I I out of all the battles we had probably um the ones that I, I'd say I mean I don't know. I can't mention one really. There were so many. 
that's, a, there, see, there, that's some real talk <laughs> right there. So many battles. And I, and I don't want to put. And I don't want to say somebody because somebody might contact me after and say, "What about the battle we had? Right. That was more intense yeah, than that yeah, one." Yeah, yeah. So we kind of yeah, they were they were all good ones. Some of the ones we had at UK Champs I quite liked, although I felt we were going through the motions a little bit on some of those. You felt that? Yeah, I felt it. Yeah, the first couple of champs, I didn't think there was anybody in the first two years that was really up to our level. I'll be honest yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, as a crew, I kind of felt that, and yeah. also I th it was such a new, it was so so novel of a, as an audience yeah. to have to have break dancing covered like that in such a spectacular way. Yeah, and and on the third the third year we we battled like well I wasn't there for that one I was in America at the time I think I was in New York, and Nick and that and Asa and stuff they battled like um. Style elements and legs and that joined in. That's an amazing battle, That's you know. Huge dude. But wow. obviously, we didn't. We we kind of by that point, we kind of, like I say, we built ourselves up. And, and, and when you do competitions, I, I I found it a bit draining doing competitions. Really? Yeah, I, I don't know why. It, it was never really so much my thing. I you know I did it as I said. We as a group mainly did it for the culture mm. to keep breaking alive because breaking was almost so dead that when you. I thought well, we'd kind of do anything just to make sure we keep it alive. Keep it moving, yeah. Keep it moving, you know. Even if I was like, well, I'm not too much yeah, feeling you did that. TV and everything. Yeah, you we guys did. Yeah. Were we did Blue Peter. We did yeah. Richard and Judy. We did this yeah. morning. We did. I mean, John did like, uh, what did they? They did the Shirley Bassey video yeah. and stuff like that. Music and, videos, yeah. Yeah, we did loads of music videos and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we did. Oh man, lots of, it's lots just of a, a stuff. melting pot of just so much history. It's fucking yeah. important. Okay. Um, in that respect, the most what's the most cheesiest thing you've ever done? And you've said, just oh, God, I wish we didn't. It's not that we didn't want to do it, most cheesiest but thing could I, have done without it now looking I, back. What would I say the most cheesiest thing I've ever done? Um, see, probably maybe maybe Blue Peter was a bit cheesy. Yeah, I did Blue Peter, and it was a bit cheesy. It was a bit cheesy. Yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit cheesy BBC. It felt compromised. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it was a bit, you know, it was yeah. a little bit, you know, sort of like, it felt a little bit like a bit I was... dirty. It felt a little bit like... Because it, it was it, also it's sort of in the... It was when the BBC was still sort of like a um, very um, auntie, well, very yeah. <laughs> still very auntie. Yeah, yeah, it was all. It was a little bit. Yeah, it was all a little bit arm round. Yeah, well, you're here then. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> it like that. It was all. You know, I th I thought after we did Australia, it was going to sort of dish out the world as originals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Slippers. Get your cardigans out, boys. Nice show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, that was probably one of the. But I still enjoy. I still enjoyed it. Yeah, it was kind of like one of the. The, sort of the cheesier things with it, but it was it was okay. I'm um, Richard and Judy. That was a little bit cheesy, um, but I didn't mind doing that. Richard either. Judy for those outside of uh, UK is a morning program that, uh, um, yeah, most m most people end up going. <laughs> Going there on some segment. A lot of, <laughs> you see, the, in, normally they do these novel, uh, maybe slightly patronising segues that, they, that you know, break dancing at carnival or some shit. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's one that it's a route, route passage. See, in the, in the in the sort of late nineteen eighties, we would we wouldn't have been asked for a start because there was no interest in it. But we wouldn't have done that because we were about you know we were hardcore b boys. We yeah, didn't want to be yeah. commercial. But by the early early nineties, we saw like dance was going to come back, and it's okay doing it on your own for a long time but we'd done it and we held up you know mm. held, held up the scene and we just thought you know if this is coming back we need to be part of it and we need to try to bring it back because mm. even then I was like is it ever going to come back properly mm. is it ever I mean look at it now it's, you've influenced so many people man thank you again you have you're, you're so kind saying yeah, that. thank you, you have. you've influenced the, the younger generation and beyond and it's things like that where you know they see you on a children's TV programme that's actually the it's their gateway to this, yeah. this other world, isn't it? Thank you, yeah. You know, it's, it's really you know. nice when, say, people like you say that or some breaker, you know, I've had guys over the years come and say, oh, you know, I first saw your show, you know, when you sort of when you did the UK Champs and you really inspired me, you my first cruise that you know, got me back into breaking or inspired me to break and start. You know, and when people say that, it's like really like, it means more than anything else, really. It means more yeah. than well, sort of, you know, you winning so. a trophy or if you inspired one person. Big time. You know, that mean, that's really profound experience you felt like you you know like you know that's yeah. changed somebody's life that means more than anything yeah and yeah. i also feel like um and again it's, it's it's the fact that you're still breaking now and and yeah it's it's knowing that it's achievable yeah like, like when you've got older peers like i remember seeing you guys hands down second to none scratch perverts um and maybe one or two others i i certainly recognized you as mm. being older than m me and watching but that made it even fucking cooler yeah and, and your attitudes were get it done and that is beyond like 
That's I mean, the we real were, shit. Obviously, we were breaking the around the done. time. Like, obviously, Scratch Perverts, they changed DJ. Yeah, they changed it 100%. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. were the next level, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when, it's a really... Um, this is a story, actually, about Vegas... Um, it's funny because we, we <laughs> Vegas story. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's not that bad. One. <laughs> um, so uh, nothing illegal. Uh, so uh, so basically, um, we were in New York around about this is Rock's Day anniversary for '97. I mean, Nick and um, I think it was Nathan. Yeah, yeah, Nathan came, and um, we went. I think it was '97 or '98. Yeah. Anyhow, we saw Vegas, and he was over to do the is it the ITF DJ mm, Championships. Yes, yes, so we're waiting this queue, and Tony goes, oh, "I'm going to go and enter the competition." So anyhow, I always remember it well. <laughs> you know, he went in, you know, Tony's got, he's got his mobile lights and yeah, time yeah. and he's chain smoking. We're waiting in the queue. So anyhow, they, they called out the GJs and all these DJ names. And then somebody said, yeah, Tony Vegas. And um, basically there was, there was a bit of a laugh actually. They were mm. like, Tony Vegas, <laughs> who's that? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? What, so anyhow, like, he, they were kind of like, you know, laughing a bit of that at the start. And then I remember he, they called him up to DJ. And um, basically, um, yeah, Tony Vegas next. And there was a few people like sniggering that a bit. Who's this guy from the UK? So you know, he goes up, puts his packet of mobile lights down, his lighter like that, gets his records, puts them on, and then just does this set. Obliterates the fucking And everybody's blade. jaw and that nightclub is on the floor after he did that set, I'm saying now. He won it. He won the ITF yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. His set was one of the best sets I've ever seen to this day. <laughs> I remember him coming off, I remember him just coming off like that, lighting up a fag like it was just nothing. Dude. <laughs> Ray, I, I don't know anybody that was there watching it. Like you, yeah, you we were, were actually right there. there with him. Yeah, he'll, he'll say about that. We were right there. I remember that night. It was incredible. Yeah. It, electric, it, it was defining. Electric. Yeah, yeah. He could, he just, and I always remember all these guys from New York, you know, who were like, yeah, obviously that yeah, the, the home of like hip hop and that, but they were just like, yeah, tonight it belongs to to, to London and yeah. Vegas, you know. Like, didn't they call him? Didn't they because he had the hat on? They didn't they call him DJ Huckleberry Thin? Summit, summit just, like just for a laugh. Just for a laugh. They yeah. really weren't taking it seriously, yeah. and then he. But just... you know, but you know what? You know, Tony, he saw, like, kind of turned up. He looked like he wasn't bothered yeah. until he hit the decks. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, kind of time, <laughs> time sort of That's the started to change, and, and people was like would start to crumple yeah. <laughs> up. So, um, but yeah, he was amazing. So that's kind of a you know, and I knew Joel um, from obviously Prime Cuts from back in the day. I knew him from the nineteen eighties. Um, kind of knew a lot of yeah. around you know because obviously we went to sort of stuff in the late nineteen eighties when there was no interest in breaking, and we were kind of these. I remember, I, I think I first, I met people like Renegade and that mm. in the late 1980s. We went to this jam called yeah. Livestock in 88. That's big up Renegade. Yeah, it was the first time we saw him and um, he saw us break. It was me, Nick and John and, mm. you know, it's Nick doing flare halos and me doing like 30 head spins. And, you mm. know, and I, I think, at the, you know, I, you know um, Renegade, they'd never really seen anything like that before. No. Not at that level that well, we were so at. Well, you're so unassuming and, and yeah. uh, it mirrored a time of like the new, British invasion, as you, as as I see it, when Tony went and did the ITF, and and you you guys would, it was it, like I said, it's just it's just it was such a curious thing that you guys would would just all of a sudden just pull up on people <laughs> and just fucking have it. It's it so was fun. yeah, I mean we were kind of like you know I mean you probably know I mean I'm not you know I wasn't the tough, toughest guy in the sense but you know saying you know Darren Ace tough guys man you know yeah. they're strong physical yeah. guys so that you know they some people you know like you could. You know they could, you know they could break, and they could also have a row if anybody really wanted to get like that about mm. stuff. You know, so we kind of, you know, that that was good to have sometimes because we did go to a few places where people were like a little bit, mm. you know, you, you get you get that when you're involved in hip hop sometimes, yeah, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you're and and you you have to be a little bit, you have to you put up a bit of a front and say, yeah. come on, man, yeah. you know, you stop that. <laughs> especially, especially British club punters. Yeah, that, yeah, club punters. You, you, know, you got it in one. We yeah. talk about it a bit in the film, don't we? Yeah. Sometimes we had that a bit in breaking yeah. and sometimes, you know, when people start yeah. throwing a bit of glass on the floor, you have to be like, hang on, mate, yeah, it's yeah. got to stop, you know. Yeah, getting it. If you, if, you don't, if, you don't want, if you don't want to be involved in this, you don't like it, just yeah, yeah. go outside or something, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you hear these stories about breaking, it's, you know, like, I'm, I remember... I mean, the French breakdance scene, you know, fuck with it. Like, they'll yeah. fucking stab you. <laughs> yeah, they were, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't... Brutal. I, I, yeah, the, those guys, they were really, I mean, out of everybody we met back in the day, um, Axel Force were, they, they kind of had some, they, they, they reminded me, whereas Battle Squad, you know, they were amazing. They were more individuals. Mm. They, you know, Axel Force were very tight as a crew like us. Mm. And uh, we never had any problems with them when we always met them. They were so humble and nice to us. They, they they liked us, you know, they we because we, you know, obviously they breaked in, in France through that dead era. Mm. So we had a lot in common, you know. Mm. And um but yeah, I mean they they had a really, really amazing scene there for the time. You you know, you went to Paris 
and they had that kind of old school mm. scene. Shopping malls. Yeah, wherever. they had that old screen. They, they were such a high level as well. Mm. Yeah, they had a different style to us. We were a little bit more, you know, faster, and mm. they were a little bit more, you know, a little bit. They liked their slowness yeah. and they liked the acrobatic stuff, you know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you look at um, uh, style elements, they were quite influenced by Actual Force as well. The, especially Gabine, the slow back bridges and where he yeah. does the freezes, you know, yeah. the, the real complicated twists and that. Um, you know, they influenced a lot of people with that. And they were just all around good guys, all of them. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I liked them all. You know, Kareem, Laurent, Gabine, um, uh, all of them. Ibrahim, uh, mm. all, all top men. Yeah, I, I, I see, um, I guess. France to breakdance seems like what um, Brazil was to football. That's it why. was, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, They yeah. just had it in their DNA. They had it in their DNA, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just it. Yeah, I mean, they were, those guys, yeah. a lot of those guys were in that film called La Haine. Yeah. So yeah, they were exactly, quite, yeah, 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 so they were kind of, you know, they, and they were like celebrities in Paris at the time, you yeah. know. And they, they, a lot of them come out, you know, obviously you had the, the crews like Paris City Breakers and that, yeah. but obviously it was Actual Force that held they the really torch held in the Paris. Torch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up Junior as well. What a fucking yeah, he's amazing. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still doing it as well. Yeah, incredible. Still pulling out that incredible stuff. Yeah, big up Junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. do. Um, what's the future, brother? I mean, you've got this dark, <laughs> and, and uh, you, 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 you're suggesting that uh, you know. I'm of an age now. I do it a couple of times a week. I want more. What have what, what you got? What's I happening? do probably want... I don't know. Do I want more? Do I not want more? I don't know. I'm just happy to be able to do it. I'm mm. happy to be able to still be able to do it with the guys a little bit. You know, that, that I'm kind of not at that... You know, in your 20s or in your... You're, you're, we were always pushing it back then. Mm. I've got to get this. I've mm. got to get... Mm. You know, I've got to get a head spin 90. I've got to get this freeze into that. I've got to get that move. I've got... You know? Mm. Whereas now I'm older, you know, I've kind of lost more moves than what I've got now. Yeah. <laughs> if that's possible. It's documented. So, because obviously, there. you know, I, I just stick to the... If I do power now, it's the ground stuff. You know, I don't... I, I can't do flares anymore. I don't do a lot of the high stuff anymore. Because you know, I, st I, I can still do the the United windmills and the mm. head spins because it's the ground power. Mm -hmm. So we, as us guys, kind of stick to that now because it's kind of you're not going <coughs> to injure yourself doing yeah, it. No, you're not. And yeah. you can do that for like forever and a day. So I don't know what's the future. Just just keep keep doing it. I'm living life. You know, still buying a few tunes, doing a little bit of dancing, going to an event that I fancy. Mm. Come up here to see you. Come on, my God. <laughs> it's, so, honestly, it's been a real fucking yeah, pleasure. It's, it's been, it's been, been brilliant. I've really enjoyed speaking to you. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah we should have done it earlier. Yeah, we should have done it earlier. <laughs> oh, that's right. Big up, Tony DePencil. Old tight second to none each and every time. You know, it is Killer Gallant Podcast. I like when it was out of fashion, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right? Tell a friend to tell a friend. You know what it do? We're doing it for you. The culture, the vibe, the passing of information. Um, so, yeah, sharing is caring, all right? You stay lucky people don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Cheers, Dave. Thanks, man. Easy. Make it easy, brother. <laughs> hey, was that, eh? Did you like it? No.